Well, today I want to talk a little bit about stacking trays and what's good about it, why everybody does it, or most almost everybody's doing it, and why it's also difficult to stack some things. So what I'm going to be trying today is stacking some trays I normally wouldn't stack because um, the seeds are very, very fine, very small. They can easily get stuck to the bottom of the tray that's above it. And so I'm going to be trying what uh, Curtis Stone, the urban farmer, which if you haven't ever seen his videos, you should definitely check him out, Urban Farmer, on, uh, on YouTube. And he's also, I think he's got a website and he does all kinds of really cool stuff. And he's kind of one of the guys that got me into this. But what he was showing was that he uses vermiculite for the seeds that he normally wouldn't stack. He uh, just puts a thin layer of vermiculite on top of the seeds and then he can stack his trays on them and the seeds won't stick to the bottom of the other tray. And I've, I've used vermiculite for stacking different seeds in, in the past, um, things that uh, do better if they're covered up, things that want to bring up the seed hull. And if you use vermiculite on top of uh, cilantro um, or beets, uh, shard, it does a really great job of breaking off the hull and then lets the, the shoot come up clean. And so I'm going to try it on my uh, spicy mix that I get from Mountain Meadow or Mountain Valley that uh, has broccoli, kohlrabi, arugula, uh, there's a couple other things in there and it's a good mix I get it. It's like it's inexpensive like eight bucks a pound for the seed. So I'm going to use that as a test for the vermiculite. I'm going to do two trays with the vermiculite and two trays without and we'll see what happens. All right, as you can see, I've got my four trays. The seeds are already in them all. And I've got two trays with a thin layer of vermiculite and two trays without. They're both the same seed. The uh, tray without vermiculite will not be stacked. They'll just be covered with an empty tray. And the vermiculite seeds are gonna get stacked. So, I'm just gonna water these in real quick. I'd already watered the uh, soil pretty heavily before I plant, but and I just like to mist the seeds a little bit, get them nice and wet. All right, I'm gonna stack these up and cover those ones up, then be right back. Oh, well, here we are in the uh, microgreens palace. We've got our trays that are stacked up with the vermiculite, and then one of the trays that doesn't have vermiculite stacked onto the top tray, so that they're all stacked. And then this is the other one that doesn't have vermiculite that's just by itself. Now, I'm going to get into some reasons of why it's nice to be able to stack your trays. Probably the number one reason is space. You can stack like six of these. I don't know if you really want to go much taller than six because of the weight starts to get pretty heavy on the bottom tray. But when it's like radish and sunflower and peas, things like that, you can easily stack you know, about six trays and it all takes the space of one tray. The other reason for me that I really like is that you need less lids. So I don't have a ton of trays. I probably have around a hundred and some of those have holes and some of them don't. And the ones that I, I always double stack them, I have one without holes at the bottom of the tray, then one with holes. And then if it's not getting stacked, it needs another one without holes to go on top. So that's kind of taking up an extra lid. I mean, this right here, would have taken normally three lids and instead it has one. So that's really helpful. I'm able to rotate you know, more trays through and keep more stuff planted. Another major reason to stack is to really force the roots into the soil. The sprout will try to grow up and if it doesn't have any weight on top of it, because it normally would have dirt on top of it, it normally would just kind of grow leggy and um, the germination rate isn't as good because you don't have the moisture being consistently held in there. And so the germination, I was going to get into, is another big thing. And the reason I'm trying this with the mix is for this reason. So this mix is something I really like. This half of the tray was harvested already once. And it was harvested after about 10 days of growing. So things were really small. Well, 
I noticed right after I harvested that there was a lot of stuff that hadn't really germinated very well or was just starting to germinate. So I left it alone to see what would happen. And this is what I ended up with. And you can see there is a ton of really good product here that didn't get harvested in that first cut that I would have liked to have had it all come up in the first cut. This right now is probably maybe a week overgrown of what would be ideal, but I mean, you could still eat this right now. This is great. And you can really see that, you know, the, the, um, the different things that are in here, the mustards, the cabbage is really starting to show up and the kohlrabi is really, you know, catching in. And so I'm, it's, I'm hoping that by stacking them, I can get them all to germinate evenly, not have anything that just shoots straight up and kind of, you know, shadows out anything below it and see if I can get it more even. And after about four days or so, I'll uh, do a follow-up video and let you know how it went. Thanks for watching.